a second to check out my Patreon page, guys. Your support is really appreciated. Enjoy the tutorial. Hey guys, and welcome to the uh, the third Let's Code tutorial for the Star Blaster. Um, in the last tutorial, I kind of had a bit of realization halfway through the coding that um, maybe we would want a timer for the the game because otherwise you would just be tapping stars all day. Um, but yeah, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, tell you that we're going to add another timer. So we're going to add this timer uh, right underneath the dispatcher timer that we added initially and just left as dispatcher timer. Now we've added another one called game timer. Now obviously we name them differently because we need to use them at different times. They're completely separate and they have different tick events. So I've added that in. We're going to take score out, which we'll do that while I remember. Um, and I'll just keep going down the list as I say. So we're going to add in the game timer here. Uh, then we're going to remove the score which I had in here. Uh, further down, we need to add a couple more uh, variables here, which is going to be the total stars and a game time. So the total stars is going to be used to determine how many stars have been down on the uh, on the canvas uh, to kind of generate the score, which is why I took score out because I realised it was pointless unless you want to do some sort of multiplication. Um, then I've got the game time as well, which is obviously going to be, it's 30 seconds long in this case, or you can have it however long you like, because in the tick event we're just going to have whenever it reaches zero. So you could put any time in here. Now as we scroll down to the uh, the initializing part of the app, when you go onto the page, obviously we've got our original timer um, code in here, but we're going to add another one underneath. And this one here is obviously the same thing as above, uh, but obviously we've changed a few bits. So we've left it at one second per tick. Um, obviously because if it's counting down in seconds, if it didn't count down in seconds, it just wouldn't make sense. Um, so I've left that. And obviously we just hang, we have to just add here game timer.interval and game timer.tick. And then for the tick event, I've created a new one called game timer underscore tick. Now you just go down a little bit further, just underneath the dispatcher timer underscore uh, like tick, I've kind of added this game timer one. Now in here, we've got a few things. Uh, we've got just the if statement here, which is going to say if the game time equals zero, so if our game has come to an end, then it's going to be game over. Um, the timer for the gamer is going to start, this game time is going to stop, and we're going to completely clear the canvas. Now, this might not make sense yet, but it will make sense in a minute. So, all we're doing in this line here is canvas area, which is what we've named um, our canvas, it is as you can see here, canvas area. Um, we're going to just do canvas area dot children dot clear. Now this isn't just brushing off a whole load of kids somewhere random. This is basically just killing off all of the images that are on the canvas. Um, so I'll just continue. If it is not zero, then obviously we're going to have an else, which is that the game isn't over. We're going to take one away with the minus minus. Uh, so we're taking one away each time. Um, and then we're going to use the game text block text. And that's going to become equal to the game time to a string format so that it comes out on the page. Um, I have done a few changes on this bit here. I've moved things around as well in uh, in the actual code edit editing side of it here because I wanted to make sure the canvas is always on top of everything else because it's nothing more annoying than having a tap to begin where you have to tap in a particular place. Like you should be able to tap anywhere um, within reason, obviously. So all I've done is I've added, obviously we had, the, we had the score here originally, the score text block. I've just added another little one above it called the score label and written score in there. And then I've also added a time label and a, uh, a time text block because obviously we need one to tell people how long it's got left to go. And obviously the time is going to tell them this is the time and this is the score. Uh, then I've just literally cut the canvas code out that was above here and just pasted it in below because then that means this is effectively on top of everything else. So if we try to click on time, we are actually in fact clicked on the hyperlink button, which is the tap event or the, the tap to begin. So that's that anyway. Um, what are I going to do? So basically what we've got here as well, we've added another, um, another little bit. So I've added a little function, which is spawn star. So as soon as we've started the game, uh, inside here, we've got some new code. So I left it about here last time and it just said spawn the first star. Um, what we've got is we've got the time text block is getting set to the game time, which when it begins will be 30. Um, and then we've got the game time is going to start and we're going to spawn a star. Now the spawning of stars and the time, the game timer are completely unrelated. You know, it doesn't matter how many times the timer ticks, 
it's not going to spawn extra stars because the way we're going to do this is how many stars can you actually destroy in a given time frame. So I've added that there. There are the bits that you're going to have to add, but you can't add spawn star where well, you can. You can't really add it till the function exists. It will just have like a red line underneath it. So if we go down to where I've done the spawn star, what we've got going on here. So we're going to create a new image every time this function gets run. Now the image, we're going to literally just do image in, and we're going to call it new star, and it's going to be equal to image, like a new image. Um, then we're going to give it a name. Now it's name, I'm just calling it star, and then I'm and adding on however many stars have already been created. That's just simply so that each image would have a different name in case for some reason you wanted to label your images. I mean, um, I've got games that I've made in the past where you tap on the screen on an image to kind of you know you can retrieve what its name is what number it is just to make sure your game's working so it's good for debugging and stuff like that um i'm setting the source so we're doing name star, uh, new star which you can see this bit here we're setting the source um to the images and the star the one that we've added here i mean you might have a different set of images you might not have downloaded from the first video but you're more than welcome to obviously um then i've added a height and a width now i've made the star image 60 by 60 you, your image might be totally different um, but the reason that I'm saying this is because it, it, this will matter for the next part okay I'll, I'll explain why but at the moment we're, the image is 60 by 60 it could be 80 by 80 or 100 but it doesn't really matter but it does matter when it comes to the positioning so then we've also got um, new star dot tap now what this is going to do is this going to associate a tap event with any star that gets made so every time a star is made with this spawn star method it will be given new star underscore tap um, as its tap event so that this code will always execute on any time that a star is on the screen it will always execute this one little bit of uh, code here so this bit that I was saying about sizes basically um, on my one my canvas um, my canvas here is let's have a look it's 480 wide and it's 668 in height now, I said before you could have a full size canvas. I don't know how what size you've put yours in at. But the reason I'm saying this is we're randomly generating the position of the star. So we don't want the star to appear off the page. Now, the way that I get around this is basically if you choose 480 like I did with the width, if you just do a random number between 0 and 420, that's 60 less than the the 60, 60 less than the maximum amount you could have now our image when it gets spawned the top left hand corner of an image the top left point is the position it will spawn from so if we put it down at 420 exactly then it will go 60 to the right of wherever the 420 is so say 420 is about is about that dot there it's probably not but if it is it's then going to add 60 pixels on to build the image and then it's going to build 60 down so our star would have spawned from that position there that white dot it would have gone down like that so the reason we do this is if we take 60 off then it means if it randomly generates 420 the star won't be half halfway off the screen so if you've made yours 100 then you're going to want to make it 380 because that's 100 away from the edge and the same for the height i mean mine was 668 in height and I've just taken 60 off of that as well. So I know that my star should never spawn off of the screen. It could spawn, you know, with its edge touching the screen, but the star won't ever go off. Um, so once we've generated it here, we basically were doing a random. So we're doing a random number. And first of all, we're doing left position equals number dot next, and then the two numbers we've given here between zero and 420. And then we've got um, another integer here, which is top position. So we're doing a random number of zero to 608. Then what we do down here is we go to canvas and we set the left of new star. So what we're doing is we're effectively saying we're going to set the left position of new star, which we know is the one we're creating here. And we're going to give it the left position as the place we want it to be. And then we're going to do set the top of new star to the top position, which we've generated here. Then all we do is canvas area, which is obviously the name of our canvas. Then we're doing dot children dot add. Now this will just add the image into the canvases children, so to speak. Um, and it will become part of the canvas. Now that will instantly then mean that the star is on the screen. So once we've run spawn star, the star's there. So, you know, the aim of the game is to hit it. So once you've then seen the star, you've tapped on it, that's where our little tap event has been written in. So now 
we do tap and when you tap on it it will get the image now the reason I identify them by name is because you can use it for debugging like I was saying but the main reason that uh, you need to bring it in as um, an image you have to do image and you have to do it sender as image because when they've tapped on it you need to know what image it is this is going to sound confusing because in order for the canvas to remove that particular image it has to know what the image is okay it sounds confusing but if you were doing this in a different scenario you wouldn't just want to use that code I had earlier which wipes everything off because you might have stuff on there you want to keep so for example you might have like a little forest and you might have tree images on the canvas which people could put down on their own um, and then there might be something else on the screen that you want them to be able to remove but you don't want to remove everything so we pass the sender as an image and then all we do is we do we've called I've just called it image to keep it simple um, and then we do canvas.children.remove and then we remove image which is obviously this one here which is actually sender and obviously that is whatever you've tapped on then all I'm doing is adding one to the total stars so that's our you know it's our score uh, which also means the next image will have a different name because we do uh, star plus total stars to string so we're, we're giving it a unique name um, and then we're just doing the score text block text and we're making it equal to the total number of stars that have uh, appeared and then obviously the final thing to do is spawn a new star so that's that um, obviously the reason that we do the wipeout is because um, where is it let me have a look here it is the reason we wipe it out is because if we don't take the star off the screen it's just going to spawn another one if you tap on it and then it's just going to keep letting you add score after the time has ended so we're clearing the screen to take the stars off and then that will be ready for our next video where I'm going to show you how to kind of finalize the you know the ending of the game you know it will pop up um, it'll tell you what your score was and then it will let you upload it like you know save it locally or upload it to the server um, so now what we'll do is we'll run the emulator and I'll show you exactly what we have Okay, so I'm going to enter my name and click play. So we've got a tap to begin. I've tapped, as you can see, it's still zero, 00 until it hits go. Once go, we've got 30 and our timer has now begun. So we start clicking on our star. My star is generating itself randomly about the, uh, the app here. And it's quite a pain to do in the emulator, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's also, I noticed earlier while I was testing it, quite addictive because you want to see if you can get any quicker with your mouse but as you can see the, the star is spawning close to the edges at times but it won't go off and that is simply because it's 60 wide and we've left 60 off the boundaries and I am actually about to beat my main score come on come on all right okay I beat my score that makes me feel a bit better got one more one more oh, good. Damn it. Oh, okay well there you go anyway so when the time hits zero the star completely disappeared off the screen so we know that there was you know had that not happened as you can see there's no ending yet I'd have been able to keep clicking on the star and as we know the star code once it's clicked on is what generates a new star straight away so it's instant rather than doing it via the timer people could maximize the amount of stars so 56 is my emulator score I can't wait to have to put it on my phone and beat that um, you have to let me know in the comments what score you managed to get through your emulator and uh, let me know what you've managed to click your way to so that's the end of that um, in the next one I'm going to show you how to kind of you know have a little maybe a message pop up and an OK and a cancel for uploading to keep it simple or maybe I'll pop up a little rectangle and a, and a bit of text to say you know this is the end of the game feel free to go ahead and try and do it without my help um, but you know you're going to have to add the upload code which will be similar to one of the tutorials I did the other day with um, the My, MySQL communications so anyway guys, thanks for watching the uh, the third Let's Code tutorial with Star Blaster. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, so don't forget to subscribe, check out my Twitter, my Patreon page, and uh, just yeah, let me know what scores you get in your emulators. I'll see you in the next one.